Uvalde has suspended its entire school district police department after months of nationwide backlash. This comes just as families of victims from the massacre conducted an 11-day sit-in in front of the school district police station. The mass suspension comes quickly after the superintendent of the Uvalde School District announced that he is retiring, and an officer who responded to the shooting was fired for not bringing her vest or rifle when she was one of the first officers to enter the school on the day of the massacre. Mm. All right, so uh, a refresher for the viewers to what, you know, what went wrong here. This was the horrible, horrific mass shooting. Um, so many children and a few teachers died uh, when the 19. shooter came and uh, had barricaded himself in a classroom, although now we know that the classroom was maybe not even yeah. locked. Police, so many police showed up, tons of police, and they waited and waited and waited and waited as the- Over two dozen law enforcement agencies yes, as chil up. as the children still alive in the classroom with, with bullet wounds, calling 911 saying, please come in and save us, we are dying. They waited. The one officer, uh, his wife yeah. was the teacher in there dying, and he moved to, toward the door and they held him back and took him away. Parents outside, desperate to get in. Um, everyone trying to do something except the police. And I'm glad you make that point because that is a beautiful, the, the officer that was fired, so that officer was found on body cam footage that in conjunction to not bringing their rifle and their vest inside even though they had it and they just left it and went inside unarmed. Then they go outside where they stayed for the entire the entirety of the incident and they're heard on their body worn camera footage saying, saying, if my children were in there, you could bet I wouldn't be out here. That's all I know. <laughs> and that's their job. It's their job. It's, this is so, yeah. It, it's, and it's, you know what's, you know what is unfortunate? When you have people like me who are incredibly critical of the police, they should not. It's the kind of thing I, I, I would have to infer, right? I infer, I've said a million times, it was very clear that these officers did not care. It was negligence. They made an executive decision just to disregard the lives of the children. We know that based on all the evidence that we know. But to hear it, but to hear it on camera, to consciously know, to stand out there as an officer, to have, it's your job to protect these people. You were there on the scene to respond to it. You have the weaponry, you have the shields, you have the protection, but just to make a conscious decision, I'm not gonna do it, and I know that if it were my kid, I would. Stood out there and consciously just looked at those parents. In fact, not just looked at the parents, as we know, the parents were berated, uh, tackled, arrested, pepper sprayed, yes. they experienced nothing but abuse as their children are being murdered inside. Yeah, it, and this is a school district that has its own police department right. you would think to and, ha, and has had training the yes. department had training to deal yes. with this exact scenario we all i guess the you know the police department that initially responded to um columbine 20 years ago yes. right they waited we didn't know what to yeah. do. we didn't know what this new kind of psychotic mass shooter type or that yeah. they're not taking hostages they're just there to kill people so back then the police waited right they didn't know what to do now we know we have seen we've had we unfortunately several so many like this we've had and the recommend the training is for police including for these police Rush the shooter. Do not wait. And you don't wait for reinforcements. You don't wait for backup. You, th you throw yourself and they know at the that. shooter. And, they and know if you that. get shot, the guy behind you, maybe he gets a shot. And not only shooter. do they know that. They know that. They had a training. They had their most recent training maybe a month before this. But additionally, again, over 12 different law enforcement agencies showed up. So even if, let's mm -hmm. pretend that that one, the school's uh, um, police department, was just unprepared or they didn't know or they have the, didn't have this wherewithal, they had backup and people show up with tactical shields that said, this police department actively prevented them would not allow them to go in and help the children so it, it, right. it, this is the least that could be done, and I don't want to. And I don't want to downplay the win of having this uh, school, the, this police department suspended, just because I read all the commentary from the families themselves who did the sit-in and who have advocated mm -hmm. for this, and this is a win for them. And so I don't, in any way, want to downplay that. But this is the least of what should be being done. An entire fourth grade class was massacred months ago, and we're just now only in response as the school, the, the semester's already started. Mm -hmm. and parents have to sit at the parents of their children who died have to sit in and beg you to right. hold these people accountable and what you're saying you're going to conduct an investigation what more investigation what investigation hasn't been conducted what don't we know what do we need to know more that that you need to hold these people responsible for what more do you need to know other than they stood there and allowed a fourth grade class to be massacred Conservatives should view it as a, because, you know, this gets into the, you know, the, the, there's some reflexive support for law enforcement mm -hmm. among some Republicans. View, I always say to view it as a, it, these are government employees. It's yeah. a government employee accountability issue. Just like you would want, you know, you don't like what, uh, what certain teachers are doing or certain university administrators. Or just just this in the same way, or IRS agents, the same yeah. way you think reckless government employees, because they work for us, they're paid for by our tax dollars, they should be held accountable when there's wrongdoing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that go, that should go the same for the police. I and this is a just a crystal clear example of utter catastrophic failure on the part of people who work for us Absolutely. who are supported by our tax dollars. Absolutely. I think there is too much resistance to to being critical of police when they've acted poorly. Let me say this. As a person who was an abolitionist and who was critical of the police across the yeah, board. And I am not an abolitionist. I know. We know, we know Robbie, the streets know. <laughs> not okay. <at> all. <laughs> but as a person who was an abolitionist and is incredibly critical of the police, I find that if your response to me is no, we should have faith in the system that all these incidents you can't deny the fact that there are miscarriages of justice that police um, commit a lot of harm, that people are killed by the police, that police allow people to be killed. You can't deny incidents like this. So if you still want to support the police, you need to take the position that this is a mistake or these are outliers or that these quote unquote bad apples. And if that's going to be your response, you have to be willing and prepared to correct the system or change it in mm -hmm. some way. The problem comes into play. If I tell you, if we have a policing system and I say, listen, we have a police state, uh, uh, police are killing people over a thousand people each year. Police are negligent. We have, uh, ever since Columbine, we have put over a hundred thousand police officers in schools across the country and it hasn't prevented school shootings. If I say all of this and I make this argument and your response is we need to maintain these things, we need these things, but you're seeing all these evidence of how it's not working effective, effectively, your position has to be. We've got to make it effective. We've got to change it. We have to hold these officers responsible. If you're not saying that police in, in and of itself are completely inefficient, you don't want the position that we should completely take yeah. police out of the schools. You have to at least acknowledge the police that responded to this school. I agree, but now, Alimi, you have to go tell John Oliver that I agree with you on this. <laughs> and if you I, saw, there was a, we were featured on yes, a John Oliver clip, I will you tell and I, him. from uh, your last appearance on the show, one of your last appearances yes. uh, in, in the chair. And uh, I, right, I'm portrayed as this like naive fool who doesn't understand that the, <laughs> the police do things wrong. Like, if you see any of my other reporting, you would not think that. I am so sorry, he, but you know, listen. It's not your fault. He, did, he called me baby Ryan Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest is a national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta go. More rising right after this.